This is the OO Gauge Cricket Pavilion from Pico Model C. Using a few tweaks, I'll transform this kit into a freight depot for use on an HO scale Wild West scene that I'm working on. In this kit, you get four wood frets, laser cut on one millimeter thick plywood, some well molded styrene castings for windows and doors and the roof, and a single instruction sheet with an exploded view of assembly. Before I start doing anything, I first take high resolution scans of the wood frets. This is a great tip I learnt while watching Jason Jensen's YouTube channel. This allows you to print out the parts again should anything go wrong, or if you simply want to make the structure a second time, you can do so by mounting the print out onto any material you would like to build with. Next I use Rust-Oleum Matte White Plastic Primer to prime the plastic castings before painting. The last bit of prep I do is number the back of the corresponding pieces according to the instructions. This way I can keep track of the parts once they've been removed from the frets. This picture here was some real world reference for the kind of paint scheme and overall look I had in mind. I start with some Vallejo white grey and dilute it with water just to add a light base layer to the main building panels. Next, I combine Vallejo White, Dark Flesh and Light Gold Grey together to create a sort of light beige colour, similar to the photo reference. Here I use a new sharp X-Acto blade to cut lightly into the wood panelling. I lift up a few sections of the boards to give the impression that the wood has been lifted slightly. Using light gold grey and NATO black I darken a few of the panels at random, trying not to introduce any patterns. I use saddle brown combined with white to create further colour variations. Using some cheap gamboge paint and white, I go over all the panels to tie the colour variations together. With some Vallejo oiled earth, wash and intermediate green, I stain the foundations and main decking. I use white on all the railings and I make sure as best I can to get coverage between the posts. I lighten some intermediate green with white and carefully paint all the wood siding.
Once you cut out the part, it's always a good idea to hold on to the wood frets, as the material could come in handy in other projects. Using dark pastel chalk colours, I lightly weather up the wooden panels. I use lighter coloured pastels on the main deck and I use some black on the edges. Beginning assembly I use fast tack sticky glue to bond the wood together. This is basically a very thick PVA glue. Once the foundation is together I use a heavy can to gently weigh it down as it dries. Once it dries, I assemble the rest of the walls. The parts are incredibly fragile, so you have to be very careful when handling them. I measure across the inner dimensions of the structure and use black craft paper to create some light blocks. With an airbrush, I mix light gold grey and white grey together. I thin it down with Vallejo thinner and apply it to the window castings. I lighten up some saddle brown with white and spray that on the doors. I make sure to build up the coat gradually.
Using Vallejo silver and toothpick, I carefully add the colour to the door handles. With intermediate green, I spray the drain pipe. and then stipple some brown over it to simulate rust. I use NATO black for the iron brackets. Then I just tidy up any missed paint spots on the model. I want this side window to be an open ticket counter, so I use an X-Acto knife to cut out the bottom windows. I also cut through the top windows to make them look more like bars. For the small dormer-like sections on the roof, I first painted the interior section brown. Then I painted the roofing section with a light grey. And then covered the rest with black. This doesn't have to be neat at all, it's just to stop any white from showing through once I attach the shingle roofing. The roof and material was downloaded for free from sketchuptexturesclub.com. The image is a seamless file, so I scaled it and duplicated it into a Word document and printed it out on sticky backed paper. I cut the paper into strips and then sliced down every individual shingle. This means once it's stuck to the roof it can be teased up with a knife to give the model more visual interest. Using Tamiya Extra Thin Plastic Cement, I glue the roof together. Using this 2x2mm angled styrene, I created some capping and glued it down with Loctite after painting some brown over the top of it. For the awning, I wanted to create some tar paper, so I took some brown cardstock and sprayed over the top of it with Tamiya Metallic Black, and then speckled over that with Tamiya Titanium Silver. Afterwards it looks like this. I cut that into one centimetre strips. And use some 120 grit sandpaper to roughen it up. I used Loctite Powerflex glue to adhere the card to the wood. And fixed it to the model with the sticky tack glue.
For some finishing touches I weather up the castings with some pastels. For the windows, the kit advises you to use the packaging material provided, but I had some extra clear acrylic lying around, so I used that instead. I created some signage using GIMP's free photo editing software. I scaled it in a Word document, printed them out and glued them to the model. Lastly I used the PowerFlex glue to secure the plastic roof to the rest of the structure. This was a fantastic kit to put together, and I'm very happy with the final result. It was quite fiddly in parts, but was easy to overcome with a bit of patience. I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks very much.